I made this lamp. It, it's a kind of interesting lamp because when you turn it on or off, it kind of moves around, does a little victory dance kind of thing. And um, it's just copper tubing. It's very eccentric looking. See, look, it's got little tendrils here, like a little grape ivy plant. And then up here, they blossom into more mature tendrils. I call these sprigs. And the whole thing is just made from flexible copper tubing, which you can buy at any home center or hardware store. Or if you have a salvage place near you, you can actually go in there and buy it by the pound, and then it's way cheaper. So you can come out with a whole ton of this stuff. And amazingly, it's still sometimes, even in the packages, I guess they, they get too much of it for construction sites or something. So look, it comes in different diameters of tubing. Um, this is about 3 eighths of an inch. This is about, I don't know, a sixteenth or something. And then it goes all the way up to these really big honking ones. All right, so the inspiration for my lamp was um, this little simple plain one that my mom got for a buck at a garage sale or something 20 years ago. But I've always really liked it. I think it's cool. So of course, when I made mine, I got completely carried away. But today, we'll just split the difference. OK, so there's going to be. Um, a bit of plumbing here and a bit of electrical work. So by the end of this, you'll know how to wire a lamp and make a lamp out of darn near anything. And you'll also know um, a little bit about how to fix plumbing if in case, you, know, you ever get a plumbing leak, because we're going to be soldering. Just a quick thing to show you, too. Um, with this big lamp, I actually use this as the main trunk of my lamp, but it's not carrying the wire. Um, that's because I drilled into this main trunk to put these little branches off. I'll show you how to do that. But I actually had to carry the wire up in this other bit of pipe because I didn't want the cord getting cut by the um, burrs of metal that were inside where I drilled. So that's just something to think about. So let me see. Let's just pick a gauge. say this half inch stuff. Now it's really soft. It's su such a pleasure to work with. And so all you really do is um, pull up on it and it starts to get interested in being a lamp. And then you can take some of the spiral out of it by pushing down and that sort of thing. So it's really not hard to work with. Now I've got about as much here as I want to work with. So rather than messing around with it anymore, I'm going to cut it off. And you want to use a pipe cutter. It's a great tool to have and use, and it, they cost about four bucks, and they're really cool. So, so what you're trying to do is set the pipe in that little groove, and then this blade comes down as we tighten it, and we're going to be scoring it like this. So the pipe has to sit right there. You mustn't pinch it too tightly at first, or you end up going squash on the wire and then it's not a circle anymore and it can't cut it. So you just get it started. See it's made a little score here? Well that's just going to get deeper and deeper as I go around. Each time I come up to that starting position I tighten the uh, pincher a quarter of a turn like that and the score just keeps go going deeper and deeper until it's all the way through. So it goes actually fairly quickly. There you go. Now, I want to show you how to drill holes in this. This will be the main trunk where little branches are going to come out. You, you can use any drill bit, but you need to start the place where you're going to drill with a punch. This happens to be a compression punch. It's got a spring on it. But you can also just use a nail set, uh, which is a carpentry tool. And so all I need to do is put it against the metal like this. and puts that little dimple. But heck, you could use a hammer and a nail. Uh, my point is you just need to give your drill a little bit of help to get started. And I'm going to use titanium bits, which are, um, they cut really fast through metal. You don't have to, though. Any old bit will do. And I'm going to put in a, a subtle little sixteenth of an inch branch here. So I'm going to pick a bit size that works with that size. The bits tend to, scale, you know, open the opening up a little bit more than the actual diameter of the bit. So you can use one that's pretty tight on in size. Oh. 
sometimes they get stuck. And put your um, safety glasses on, definitely, because little shards of metal fly around here. All right, so here I go. I'll seat the tip in the dimple. Okay, now you just take the um, wire that you're hoping to make your branch out of and push it in, and there's your first branch. Um, to seat it in there, you can solder it, or what I was doing on the big lamp is just forming a right angle in it so that it locks it in place, so that's not going anywhere. Then I'm going to bend it up like this and coil it around a couple of times. And then I'll cut it off again with the pipe cutter, but leave myself a little bit to work with in case I want to put any sprigs or tendrils. Okay, so I'll get the pipe cutter again. Pipe cutter. Oh. There are some people who think stuff only looks good if it's slick and symmetrical. But I think something a bit odd looking is beautiful too. Because no matter how long you have it, you still can't get used to it. It's beautiful because it's unpredictable, unexpected, even alarming. Woo! Okay, so uh, this is coming along. I've got a couple of gauges of tubing here. Look, um, there's the main one leading up, this one, and I drilled a big fat hole here, so there's a branch coming out. And then there's a little tendril coming out of this one and another branch coming out here. So it's just a bunch of coiling and twisting going on. And it looks darn ugly right now, but it's hopefully going to turn that corner pretty soon. So I can just show you really quickly how to make these tendrils. I'm using a couple of different gauges of wire. This is a fairly light gauge of wire. I think it's uh, about 12. But just get a pair of needle nose pliers and haul it in as tight as you can. And then you just rotate the wire around those. See how, how fast it happens? However, if you've got something like this heavier stuff here, you need a little bit of a different approach because look, I just absolutely can't, I can't get it to go that first little, you know, that first little kink. So if you take two screws and, and drill them into a surface that's really steady, then you can brace put the wire through, let me go from this direction, you can put the wire through and then they act as a, as a, a wire jig like this. See? Then it goes, because this stuff is really, really hard to bend just with pliers, like that. And then you can pull up on it if you want to get a bit of a spirally thing going. And then getting it out I put them at different um, levels because it was too hard to get them out. The heads stopped me from pulling the wire out before. Okay, so cool. So I'm going to start sticking these in. The, the neat thing is, like, see, this gauge of tubing is the perfect opening for this gauge so I can extend and, and taper some of the lines. Okay, so this can go in here. We represent our inner consciousness in the way we decorate. So you can learn a lot about your inner consciousness when you take a look at what's around you. Or when people give you home furnishings as gifts. Without really knowing it, they're commenting on your inner consciousness. This is why it's often so hard to write thank you notes. Okay, sanding is really important in soldering. My tendrils are done. I've got my special little mark here to show me which one I'm, I'm soldering on and which one I'm going to run the zip cord through. Uh, that's the electrical wire. So I've also sanded these two washers. Okay, They're co copper washers. And they're going to form a sandwich for the harp. The harp is this thing that goes on to carry the shade. All right. So, But there's no way to get the harp to stay on there unless we do a little bit of gadgetry. Gadgetry really is what it is. All right, so this is what happens. You put a hose clamp on to um, hold everything in place while we solder. And it's got this little hex head on it. So I got a hex head bit in my drill. Okay. 
Okay, now the hose clamp has been set a half an inch down because by the time I pile all these washers on and the harp thing, um, and then the actual um, little fixture, it has to sit just properly. And you can see my fixture is going to be going off in that direction. So I just need to adjust this by reefing on the hose clamp a little so it balances things better. All right, and I'm ready to solder. So um, the, the flux has to be applied. This is a, a mild acid that just takes the any little greasy fingerprints that my fingers might have left off. One washer. And then uh, this piece drops in place. And then I'm going to flux this washer too, mm. and drop that in place. Okay, it's a little bit overdone as usual, but um, better more than less. This is the actual solder. It just comes on a reel. And get yourself out a nice long piece of it and put a little hook on the end of it so that you can reach behind. I'm going to have the flame here, and I want to be able to reach from behind. That's because I'm going to heat this side, but I want this to be hot over here, hot enough. So put on your safety glasses and fire up your torch. Gas goes on. Hear that sound? Trigger. Whee! And you heat one side of the joint and put the solder on from the other side. So I test it to see if it's ready yet, but it's not. Test it again. Woo! See, I just melted the solder. The copper has to be hot enough to, to melt the solder. There, see, it went. That was all I needed, just that little bit. Okay, now I let it cool down, and then I'm ready to put on the, um, the fixture. Well, actually, run the zip cord first, but I have to let it cool down. <laughs> Okay, this is the coolest trick. I've got a nail tied to the end of the string, and I'm just bringing the nail along until, bingo, out it pops. Isn't that cool? And now I can pull my string through, and guess what's on the other end of the string? The zip cord, the uh, electrical cord that I, that I need to pull through here. The reason I'm doing this is because the darn cord always binds in the tubing, and in fact, I've even slimed the whole inside of the tube with some um, three-in-one oil because everything just gets stuck. And so I'm now fully slimed with the oil as well. But, you know, it's a mood. Okay, so look, there's this electrical tape that's holding the string on. You kind of have to weave the string under the electrical tape so that you're not going to lose that bond. And then just pull. Simply pull. You know what? It's a good idea to clamp this down because then you have an actual chance of making it work. So I'll just go like that. And now I've got both hands free to work. So like I say, you just lube the whole inside of that tube because otherwise this baby binds like crazy. I tried everything. I tried cornstarch on the first one over there and I tried graphite, but the best thing is actually just three-in-one oil. So once this is through, I'm going to actually put the plug on and then wire it up here for the electrical light bulb. <laughs> As Thomas Carlyle said, wondrous is the strength of cheerfulness, altogether past calculation in its powers of endurance. If things aren't going well, you can still remain cheerful. Simply allow yourself to let fly with some strong language, like, oh, phooey. <sighs> Took a little break, everything's worked out now, the darn thing's through, and I've got it to the point where I've stripped away the insulation, but for about three quarters of an inch, pulled it off, twisted the wires like this, and now I want to spread them. About, it's about two inches or so that I need that much slack is because I got to tie an underwriter's knot. But before I get all caught up in that, let me put the, um, the little cap on like this. 
And I'm going to tighten up this little set screw that's in the side. That's completely hidden to you, but it's there, right there. Like this. <laughs> I've got a piece of sandpaper hanging off my screwdriver. It's a style choice, really. You want that there just to show others that you're a rough type of girl. OK, so this is an underwriter's knot now. Give myself a little slack. And the reason you're going to do this, it's, it's a really cool knot that um, lies in the bottom of the socket here. They give you a little bit of extra room for this special knot. OK, let's tie it. OK, so you're going to make a pair of sunglasses. Make one arm. There's one little eye like that. And on the other little eye, you make the arm of the sunglasses come out to the opposite side. So this arm is behind, and this arm is in front. OK? Now, it's very logical. This one goes through this <laughs> eye, like this. And the other one goes around the corner and comes through this eye, like this. <laughs> My big fat hand hands are totally in the way, but ah! Yes, look. So now, I give it a little tug on its bottom and drop it into the cup, like this. And these two little fellas that are still sticking up, they're going to go around the little um, screws. And where are the screws? Boop! They're right here. There's a brass one. There's a silver one. And we're just going to connect them. I'm going to wrap the little arms in a clockwise direction. OK, just need a slot head screw driver right here. Just loosen them off a little bit. And the reason you want to wrap, make a little J shape is that you want to hook this wire on like this. Come on. And then as you tighten it, remember when you screw righty tighty, as you turn it to the right, it tightens the screw. It sort of sucks the wire into its little clutches. If, it, if I were turning it in the opposite direction, it would kind of kick it off. OK, so I'll do that same thing on the other side here, then drop the whole thing in. Then we'll put the plug on with just about as much success, I'm sure. OK, now it's time to put the harp on. And it works sort of like a thigh master. You just squeeze it and drop it into the um, spot where it Oh. <laughs> it's not my day. Come on, little darling. Go, go. If you're having conversations with your thigh master, you should have that checked. OK, there. Just leave it alone. All right, now, the plug. This is great. They've come up with these great little plugs. You just slide. The, you don't even have to split the wires or do anything special. You just slide the the zip cord into that little, <laughs> oh no, OK, good, <laughs> oh dear, you know, whew. Uh, and then it's another spread em situation, OK? This thing just goes like this. See those little um, sharp brass cleats right there? They're going to pierce the wire and make the contact, pierce the insulation. So this thing just slides in the back like this. And then I close them down like this and slide the housing over it like this. And there's my plug. And I'm so proud. OK. <laughs> there. OK. Put the bulb in. Spark her up. OK. OK. And possibly a lampshade. They have this um, cool copper-colored silicone sealant in the auto repair section at the hardware store. And I'm just using it to make a little gasket around the bottom um, where the cord exits, so that if the cord ever gets yanked and the copper um, would be inclined to cut it, it can't, because this little silicone thing will stop it. So looking pretty groovy, but wait till I add the shade. Nah. OK, that's a tall little table lamp, but it's looking perky. All right, there's other artisans that are working in copper and making lamps. And one of them is uh, Don Calvin. And he has done this beautiful floor lamp with mesh. And this is tubing, but it's flattened, so it looks really cool. And, and then it has these little 
flame lights that he put in the sockets behind. Really cool. And then um, this lamp and this one actually were both made by Frederick Kakish, and he uses all kinds of found items. These things are from those old library card drawers, you know, for the Dewey Decimal System. Those funny things and then the little pulls on the end. And this one has, um, he found some old so sort of metal lamp base and he put a piece of mica on this with a little pony clamp and this wonderful flexible copper stuff. So it's just really cool. So clearly your imagination is the only limit here so you, you can go mental making your own lamp. So. The black educator Booker T. Washington once wrote, excellence is to do a common thing in an uncommon way. So when you build a lamp in a way that is uncommon, you've automatically got an excellent lamp. Some people would say this is a pretty low standard for excellence, but they should lighten up. Give them one of your lamps as a subtle hint. <laughs>